Hello everyone, Airfun here, I'm Unreal Engine developer at Gamma Studios and today I'm going to show you how we can use some of the features that exist in this project. Let's start with vaulting. Just just make an object that, that will be able to vault on it. So we go here to demonstrate, we go over here and then press file, the new level, just just make an empty level for better demonstration. You can place any object that you want. For instance, I'm going to use the guardrail, one of the guardrails, and place it here with the, in the map and change its location. And by pressing F, we can see we are not as we since we're play, like we're pressing F, but we can see. We're not able to vault over the object. To be able to make this object a vault, vaultable object, I'm just gonna search for tag over here and then insert, just, just add an element. Over here, we're gonna type, uh, type in vault with a capital V. And then let's, let's try it again. Yep, all good, good to go. We can we'll be able to vault from both directions, but obviously we're not able to vault from these sides, which gives it a realistic, which makes it a realistic element. Okay, moving on to another element. I'm going to show you over here. Over here, I'm going to show you how to add different clothing to your character. As we can see in the persistent level section over here, let's just open it. Uh, let me just play, just go inside. Yep. Oop, that was spooky. Okay, in the settings, we can see, actually, sorry, in the extras, you can see here we can switch the characters for, for the characters we already made, rows, the pants, the upper body clothing. If you want to add your own clothing, your own gears, you go to, you're going to search WBP underscore outfit change. I'm going to open it. Then in the graph node, you'll be able to, you, you have to go to, yeah, these arrays over here. You're gonna select one of these arrays over here. For instance, this is the shirt section. You're gonna expand it. And then you're gonna add your own shirt over here. For instance, a custom shirt that that's uh, compatible with, with the meta human uh, character. Just You're gonna add it just over here. For instance, shirt. The new shirt comes over here. I already have this one, so I'm just gonna go over here and then that's how you delete it. I'm gonna delete it. But you can add your own over here. The other thing that I need, the other element that I need to show you is is actually when you make your when you, when you want make your own character, you're gonna use some of the components that are in, in this project. Let me go. Uh, actually, show the the new character. Just gonna type in BP underscore test. Put in any name that you want. It can be your own character. Actually, I'm gonna open it and then add any BPCs, B blueprint components that you want. You can add, for instance, your your own quest system. Uh, actually, there are couple of parameters that you can add the parameters that you can give to this to this specific quest for instance if it's a class to for you to show the current class location or you can add your own weapon inventory and then some animations that you can play for instance that's a takeout animation you're going to be able to add it here or the pickup animation the whole string for any blueprint component that you want, you can add it over here. So I already have my own character. Uh, let 
me show you. Maybe let's go the third person. That's the, that's the main character. It's, if we can see the components that I've already added, is, it comes over here, and then the parameters you can change pops up over here. You can add any of them to your project, any of them that you want. Um, send some variables that, that it needs to make it like you know customized based on your needs. And um, okay, um, let's move to another section, another demonstration. Hmm. Moving on to the the weapon weapon features, for instance. You want to change damage, some features including damages, reload speed, and materials in that sense. The data table is over here. Here's where you can change it, modify it based on your needs. For instance, I'm going to select Deadshot. That's my weapon. I'm going to change my damage over here. As you can see over here in the base damage settings, you can change it, right? Make it, make it 20. And then just the reload speed, I'm going to make it more quicker. The reload process, this is going to make it faster if, by changing it from one to two. Whatever you like, you can change it in this data table. OK, let's move on. And then I'm going to show you how you can add your own map over here in the persistent level section you'll go to. You press levels, and then you're going to create a new one or just add an existing level that you have. I've already made, made a test map. Let's just delete it. Let's just try it with a new one. It's going to create new. If you have your own map, you can obviously select it and then just going to add, add it over and bring it over here. I'm just going to create one. And then let's just give it a name. For instance, test, not toost, test. Yeah, test map. Test map new, and then in a the maps folder, just 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 to get better organized folders, like you know better better partitioning folders, and then just compress the map here. For changing the level, for instance, if you want to make it like in the start section, you're gonna put it over here, and then go to the level, and then you're gonna change the level to the load, and then to change it to the test test map. By pressing the new test map new, when you start the game, it starts from this section, the level that you you've just created. So if you want to just travel to another level, let's just turn it off. If you want to move move on to another level, you can you can use you can write down BP underscore travel to level. Yep. And and the details section in the details panel, you're gonna select it and then you can select the current level and then you're gonna type in test map. And then the level to load is for instance, I wanna go to select level. You can you can you'll add this and then this is this kinda like transfer you to another level. To make it work, to make a function without any bugs or anything, you have to you have to copy one of the level blueprints from another level. I'm just gonna like you know copy the hospital. I'm just gonna paste it in the event begin play, and then gonna connect it, and then change it to the level name that you want it to be. This is the test map new, and then. I'm gonna type in test map new and then compile and then save and then it's gonna function right now and then add a new play start wherever you want so let me just save and as you can see when you start the game we're gonna start 
<laughs> we're going to start from the player start section. And then you see the transfer happens over here when, whenever you go inside that box. And then the function takes place. Okay. Another section that we want to cover in this video is the are the parameters for the AI. For instance, I want to change the speeds of the enemies, the zombies. I'm going to go to the characters and then BPA or zombie. For instance, the one over here. Any 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 zombie that you want, I'm going to choose this one. And I want to change. You can see it has the sound settings, the attenuation settings, the attack class, whatever you like. They're all present over here. For instance, I want to change the base damage. I'm going to triple the damage to whatever what it is right now, from 25 to 75. And then you can change the speed in the behavior tree. Behavior tree. Let's see. For instance, there are some tasks that are like being carried out right now. And then you can change the speed when when it's like moving towards you for instance it's right now 600 i'm gonna, just going to change it to 400 or like i want to like what like you know the, the sound when it want to go when when it travels to the sound location then the speed is going to be changed to 300 in the like if in the beginning stage is for a random location over here the settings can be changed easily from this behavior tree so zombies gonna have new speeds based on the changes that we've made okay another topic to cover is the uh, actually a few things let's let's not forget but let's just not forget the Adding, adding of the chapters, like adding new chapters. For instance, if I want to add a new chapter over here, I'm going to go and type in, what was it? Let me just open the hospital map for a better demonstration. Let me just, you know, make it visible. It takes some time, obviously. Okay. For instance, I want to... Let me just find a start place. A starting point. You can use two different things. BP underscore chapter box. First, first, first thing that you can use. You can put it over here. Select the chapter that you want to unlock after reaching this place, this location. Just make a chapter, for instance, chapter five. Whenever you pass, so basically, whenever you pass this box, the fifth chapter will be unlocked. This this is the place where you can like change and alter the settings. Also, you can go and select a new map for the chapter level. For instance, the hospital, yeah. The hospital, I've, I've set it as the first chapter, as you can see here. For instance, my hospital interior is, is the second chapter, chapter two. We'll go to the test level and then let's just gonna, as I've said, you can change it over here. Just gonna make it chapter seven. It's not in the order, but just, just to show you guys how where the functions take place, where you can change the functions. So yeah, sorry. So I'm gonna make this hospital to chapter two and the interior to chapter three. Just changing the orders. So it's gonna work in this way. This is how the changes 
take effect, basically. Let me just see. Yeah. So this basically this will be unlocked whenever you reach this that specific location or when you open that map. We we wherever you, in whichever way you set the corresponding number. For instance, whenever I, like whenever I open the map, the hospital map, the chapter will be unlocked. So since it's already unlocked, you you're able to select it. Whenever it's unlocked, you can click on it. But if you haven't already been to that location, it's it remains unlocked. Okay, last thing. Let me just copy a couple of blueprints into this project. I go to BVC and I'm gonna show you how I'm just gonna show you how you can take this flashlight and take it transfer it to another project. So by pressing Control D, you can create a duplicate, and then by pressing the asset uh, asset connection, this is where you can you can do the changes in the map, and then this is where you save the selected uh, functions from that specific uh, item. So this says whatever it, it is required to be migrated, and then I'm just gonna. Type in a new address, the address of the new content. You can select any project that you want. And then just, just going to take this item and move it to another project. That's going to try and do like a transfer a simple blueprint. Just going to move the door. I'm just going to select the main one, gonna duplicate. The asset actions, I'm just going to migrate. And then you can see the file requires these aspects in order to be copied. And then you select the content folder that you want, the destination, any project that you you want, and you can select and just migrate it to into. Thank you everyone for listening. And if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to help.